uh, Ryan Garcia has brought you into this and he has somehow suggested that you are in a way behind his failing of these drug tests. I would love to get your response his, to that. Con his conspiracy theory is completely wrong and debunked. I have nothing to do with this. I'm completely independent of VADA. More than a decade ago when VADA first started, I was one of the first trainers or whatever you choose to call me, sports nutritionist, that was referring my fighters, world champions. The first one was Nonito Denaire. This was back in 2012, and he did four fights, won three of those. He was tested by VADA. He, he won the uh, Boxing Writer Association uh, Fighter of the Year. So I have been sending my fighters, obviously because of my background, okay, and things that happened back in 2003, almost a decade later in 2012, it was a good idea. And, and I became an, an outspoken anti-doping advocate in 2005. So I refer my fighters to VADA. That's the extent, you know, of my relationship. Did I introduce... Margaret Goodman and Flip Hamonsky that, that run VADA, two people like Dick Pound, who was the founding chairman of WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, and others that, that helped them be able to do the testing at WADA accredited labs. Yes, I made some introductions, but nothing more than that. So you are not behind Ryan Garcia's positive I am not tests. behind Ryan Garcia's positive drug tests. Uh, it's foolish for him to say that. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever uh, to lend any credence to whatever he's saying. Uh, Victor, would you consider taking any sort of action against him for saying the things that he has said seemingly without any evidence? No, I've been involved in a number of legal entanglements in the past, and it's just not worth it to me. He, he, he's I'm a big boy. He can say whatever he wants to say. I'm a true speaker. And, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Okay, I'm glad we got that part of it out of the way. Now, let's actually talk about this substance here. Osterine, I'll be honest, I had never heard of it until last night. Tell us about Osterine, what it could potentially do, why a fighter might want to take it, what sort of benefits it might provide you in a fight. Just break this down for me if you can. Okay, Osterine is something that is called a SARM, S-A-R-M. That stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator. These are very, this classification of drugs are very similar to anabolic steroids. When they became first introduced, they were pitched as safer than steroids, but of course they promote protein synthesis or muscle growth, as well as fat loss. They definitely enhance performance. And now some science has come out showing they may not be all that safe uh, to take then. And the difference is, is they supposedly target only muscle and not heart and other organs in the body. But there are many cases, boxers back in 2016, Lucien Boutte, uh, a boxer tested positive for Osterine. This isn't anything that hasn't happened before. What what kind of advantage, I mean, is it is it just a, a matter of it in enabling you to, to pack on more muscle, to be stronger? Or is yes, that the faster, faster, stronger. Uh, better reaction time. Uh, it energizes you. It helps with recovery. Uh, it accelerates healing and tissue repair after workouts. Definitely enhances performance. I've never understood this argument, but sometimes people will say like, you know, he couldn't have cheated because how could he be so stupid knowing he was going to have to take a drug test? So, I mean, is there a way to mask this? Is there a way for this to get out of your system? I mean, why... Not necessarily saying Ryan did this, but why would a fighter, knowing he has to take a drug test, fail this test? I mean, how well, could that happen? Let me explain happen? this. It depends upon the dosage, the frequency, and the length of time that you have taken the drug. There are several cases where people have tested positive for Osterine, then tested negative, then tested positive, then tested negative. Now, what happens is <clears throat> that some of these molecules can get lodged in adipose or fat tissue. And then when you do things like weight cut for a fight and you drop 10, 15, 20 pounds, okay, some of these molecules can be released and all of a sudden there's a positive drug test from exposure in the past. And you may have even had negative tests during training camp, but at some point in time, there was exposure. Now, there may not have been intent to cheat. We don't know this. But it, it, 
I keep hearing, oh, it was in tiny concentrations. Let me explain something. This test for anabolic steroids, as well as the SARMs and Osterine, is a qualitative test, not a quantitative test. They have something called a mass spectrogram fragmentation pattern. It's like a fingerprint. It either matches or it doesn't. So you're either pregnant or you're not. You're not just a tiny bit pregnant. Am I making sense? He had exposure. Strict liability rule states you are responsible for what's in your body no matter how it got there. So he's going to have to go before a commission, the New York commission, and explain and prove the burden of proof is on him. He has to prove where he got exposed to this. Now he's going to have to look at all the supplements that he'd taken and other things. But if he's unable to prove that, then the re then he's likely going to be suspended. There's been some talk coming from the Garcia camp that he took ashwagandha root. Is, is that a, could that potentially be a source for Osterine? Okay, let's hope for Ryan Garcia's sake that that's where he got it, okay? Because if if he can take, they'll get that bottle. He, I saw him hold the bottle and petting yeah. it, you know, the ashwagandha root. Okay, let's hope and pray for him that that is where he got it because they will find that lot number. They will go buy that in a store. They will test that. And if they find it in there, then he can possibly receive what they call a no fault or negligence ruling, meaning he proved there was no intent to cheat. He bought ashwagandha. He, it doesn't say that it's got Osterine on the label, and therefore that will exonerate him. My guess is that's not going to happen. They have pretty much cleaned up. I'm not going to say there are not uh, supplements out there that are contaminated, but let me tell you what I think is more likely. When you make underground anabolic steroids, when you make testosterone or nandrolone or osterine or clomiphene, any of these drugs that these boxers are testing positive for, these are not coming from an Upjohn formulated pharmaceutical that where you can buy them at CVS or Walgreens, okay? They're being made in an underground basement lab. And they buy these powders in China. They put them on a hot plate. They cook them up in these beakers and flasks. They don't wash the glassware adequately because they're selling these. Most of these, 80% of these drugs that are, are on the market are being sold out of the trunks of cars and dark alleys behind gyms. And they're for the purposes of building some bigger biceps so you can catch more pretty girls, okay? It's not right. for elite athletes like Ryan Garcia. So whatever else he may have been taking, <clears throat> the, the, the biggest barn door that's open at this point is synthetic testosterone. Your body makes about seven milligrams a day. When they do the TE ratio, testosterone to epitestosterone ratio, it's four to one. Well, that means you could take all the way up to 27 uh, milligrams of testosterone per day and fly under the radar or the allowable limit. So guys can double or triple their levels by microdosing every day. But the problem is when they do that and they got a source of testosterone from an underground lab, it may be contaminated with Osterine or, or Nandrolone or other substances. Make sense? So it's more likely that, you know, like I say, when you, when you lie down with, with dogs, don't be surprised when you get up with fleas. So... We'll find out, you know, I, my, my guess is and prediction is we're going to hear a bunch of uh, my dog ate my the homework, my homework type of uh, excuses. You know, let's hope for him that he can find a way to exonerate himself. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, let's for just a moment, talk about Devin Haney, my guy, yeah. and how horrible this is for him that he has to deal with this stuff. And, and until we get a reasonable explanation from Ryan, the burden of proof is on him to prove there was no intent to cheat. Because otherwise, I don't care if somebody snuck into your room and spiked your toothpaste, you're going to be responsible. The burden is on him. So I, I think there's going to be a very serious consequence. All these conspiracy theories are hogwash. Two more for you, Victor. And this is amazing, by the way. Um, knowing what you know about Osterine, you've got two guys who are pretty even fighters. Could that potentially provide uh, enough of an edge for Ryan to go in there and to beat Devin Haney? 
well, back to the issue of what we don't know, right. which is the dosage, the frequency, and the length of time he may have been taking it with or intent without. Because the, these Osterine is an oral. It can come in a, in a tablet form. Somebody around him could grind this up and put it in a shake, and he could drink it and not even know. I mean, this is we don't know if there's intent or not. But like I say, it's now on him, and the burden of proof is on him a thousand percent to prove that where he got it, and once he can do that, then possibly he can get what they call a ruling of no fault or negligence. I don't believe that's going to be the outcome. My prediction is he's going to be suspended, and he should pay closer attention to other stuff that he's taking that or other people that he's trusting because he got exposed somehow. We do know that. Last one, Ryan has made the point, hey, I failed the test on the 19th. Why did they allow me to fight if they knew that I had popped a, you know, a dirty test? Explain, if you can, Victor, for me, the timing, the turnaround from when you provide a sample to when those results are, are back to the test. Okay, that is just a simply a distraction technique, okay? During training camp, let's say the eight to 10 weeks that they were tested, the normal turnaround time when they collect the sample and they send it to the lab, which is in Utah, takes about two weeks. But on fight week and especially weigh-in day and fight day, they check on the requisition form stat. That means turn that around as quickly as you possibly can. That takes at least 72 hours, if not longer, okay? So if they collected a sample on Friday the 19th and Saturday the 20th, you wouldn't have data until Tuesday or Wednesday at earliest the next week. So nobody knew there was a positive test before the fight. Once again, Ryan Garcia is spewing a bunch of misinformation. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. And he's got these millions of people hanging on his every word, but what he's saying is simply not accurate.